Is that his daughter that was up there? The last few weeks? Come 
almost couldn't get it out. Hey, you looking good. Turn to someone and say, you looking good for a Sunday morning. Don't, don't just, you know, there's some other people who want to hear it too. So don't stop, don't stop with just one or two, you know. I don't think we have, to, we don't have. Uh... You're looking good, Kennedy. You're looking good, Joe. You're looking good. Looking good, Kennedy. Uh, you, you may be seated. We just uh, want to take care of a couple of things. First of all, it's always an honor to, to meet some new people. And if you're new to the church or haven't been here in a while, we want to just welcome you. Whoa. Just welcome you. And I want to, uh, I don't want to, oh, wow, wow, scare you. Scare you yeah. Hello, hello, hello. I just want to welcome you and in front of you there there's a there's a little envelope that you can open up and there's a connect card if you fill it out take it to the guest services we have a gift for you we just want to bless you thank you for being here we also have devotionals for everyone if if you have not picked up a devotional we want to make sure that you have that as well and like with that last song that we sang i think after service today there's some caroling carol is in charge of the caroling did you see how i put that together yeah so that's, that's, that's something. And uh, we, we also, I, I kind of felt very strongly uh, today, we're going to be talking a little bit about this, but I, you ever thought of yourself as being apostolic? You ever heard that word apostolic? And so many people kind of take it in the wrong, but the word apostolic literally means sent ones, someone who's sent out. And uh, we have several today that are going to be sent out. We have and we want to just make sure you understand that in every one of us is a sent out one. When you leave this place today, for instance, you're going to be sent out. You're going to be sent out to this community to be the light to this community, to be the love and the grace this community needs. Your family, we send you out with the blessing of God and the favor of God. May the face of God shine upon you and be gracious to you. So maybe you've not thought of yourself as being apostolic, but you are. And I want to use that just to kind of go into the offering. So offering is the same thing. You're actually sending something from your life out that you believe is going to bring a return. God sends us, go into all the world, he says, and make disciples. All authority has been given. He says, go into all the world. What's our world? Our world is this community. Yesterday, they, I think Kimberly told me, and by the way, if you, uh, someone, where's, where's Andrew's wife at? She's been a sent one to the kids' ministry. She's over there taking care of the kids, helping out. But I think yesterday they signed up more people, uh, new people for the food pantry. We're constantly wanting to send out the favor of God, the blessing of God, and so even your offering is literally uh, an apostolic act of believing that God wants us to go, to send, to trust, to believe that we are a part of God's family and the kingdom, and we're participating in that. So if you could prepare your offering this morning and, and, and just, just say, Lord, I send this out in faith that you're going to touch lives, that you're going to impact individuals, that you're going to use it for your glory. And Lord, you said, unless a seed goes forth and goes into the ground, it cannot produce. So we, we, by faith, release this offering. We send it out, and we trust the harvest is going to come forth from that. And we thank you so much for this opportunity you've given us to give and to share life, and to worship you in our giving. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I think Kennedy's going to play a little bit there, aren't you? I'm sending you out. Make, the, make that music sound. <laughs>
Aren't you glad he's sitting out the music? All right, so we, we have a, a couple of things we want to do. And I know maybe you're not used to even that word, apostolic, but it is an important biblical word is to be sent out and to, to do ministry. And so the first one I'm going to call up is, is Nancy Peck, and she's got a, a team that is actually going to Moffat this week. And uh, so we, we have how many, 40 of these? 40. And there's 40 people. Okay, there's going to be four of us, including myself, that is going to be going to the American Cancer Hope Lodge, which is right next door to Moffitt, where you get treatment and you stay for free, which it's a wonderful place. And I had the opportunity to be with my sister, who I might say is cured, now in 2018 yes thank you lord and um i crocheted because i was there six weeks i crocheted prayer scarves i learned about a prayer cloth here uh, we had a guest speaker years ago and it just god just put it on my heart and i crocheted these scarves and i gave them out and they still email me and they say nancy i still sleep with that prayer scarf <laughs> i'm like yeah it's good anyway so I went one time since then. It took me a year, but then COVID came, and uh, I couldn't go. So I put a group of girls together, and we're going to go and make dinner for 80 people for the cancer patients and their caretakers. It's a wonderful place, but we need to have these blessed. I had a dear friend make all 40 of these, and she said she prayed as she sewed and cut out the crosses. and. Uh, we want to bless them with that. And Andrew, you're going to let us take 40 devotionals, right? Yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. See how she asked that right there in front of everybody? <laughs> no, you can't. You can't do that. So uh, if, we, if we could stretch out our hand, you know, this is, again, this is what we're doing is our right hand of, of agreement. And Father, every one of these have been prayed over. Oil has been put upon each one of them. And Lord, this is what you... Uh, you ask us to do is to step out in faith and to reach out to those that are hurting and to go and to be a part of the kingdom of God and to declare the authority of God and the power of God. And by your stripes, these individuals are healed. Lord, uh, we ask for physical, emotional, spiritual healing for them. And we ask, Lord, that this would be an encounter, an opportunity for them to be drawn closer to you, to experience you. And Lord, we believe that with you, all things are possible. And you say to lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. And we declare your word to be true in Jesus' name. And we lift this up saying, Lord, establish your word. Let it not return void. Let it accomplish that which you desire in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Also, we have uh, Yuli and David. If you guys would come. You're, I, see, I saw you. Where, where, there you are. Now, I, I, I say this in a unique... You know, I mean, sometimes you... Well, I don't know if I want to be inconvenienced and stuff. These guys actually are going back to Haiti. They're, they're not supposed to, they don't have to go back to Haiti until the beginning of the year, but they want to go before Christmas. They want to bless all the ministry that they're involved in over there. And uh, they are making a commitment to take the kids into an environment that most of us would not want to go. And yet at the same time, they have a calling and a grace and we are part of the sent ones. And I'm saying to you, any of, we've made a commitment. We are supporting these, this family monthly uh, from our church. But any individual who wants to support them on a monthly basis can, can make that commitment. We're going to be hearing reports. They're going to be sending pictures to us and so forth. But um, this is a sign that this church is stepping into its true calling. When these kind of things are happening... And so, uh, you want to say anything, Yuli? Yeah. I just want to thank everyone for loving on our family the past few weeks. Um, just reminding us that God has not forgotten about us. Reminding us that God still sit on the throne. Um, I just thank you. You know, the word says they will know 
um, that we're his disciples by the love that we have. And you guys have truly um, shown our family love and support just by loving on our kids and just reminding us of God's goodness. Um, when it comes to Haiti, one of the things that, and I know for you guys who watch um, the news, there's always something, right, going on. Um, so the enemy wants to blind us from what's really happening. And what's really happening is that the world is impacted by sin. The world is impacted by darkness. And so it's not really unique to Haiti because we're dealing with it here as well. Um, but the difference is that you guys are blessed. You guys get to sit under um, wonderful teaching, sound teaching, and you guys could just go on YouTube and watch things and get empowered by the word. But over there, it's limited. And so um, we want to be the hands and feet of God. Um, and we know the battle is in the mind. So our focus is on blessing young girls so they don't um, get preyed into prostitution and, and trafficking. And we also want to bless um, people who are impacted by the enemy to lie to them and, and make them believe that they're not worthy. So we are focusing on a mental health community center, but the focus is on healing and um, the focus is on really using the word of God to set them free. And so if you guys could, you know, um, continue to pray for us and um, cover us there is not easy. So you, I know here, you know, you know, the enemy is always attacking, but you may not see it there. It's in your face, um, especially with young ones. So if you guys could pray for us to have a balanced life, to remember that, you know, we're each other's um, first ministry, and also for us to allow the Lord to pour into us so we're not overdoing it, but it's his overflow that will help us to bless the people. So that's, and wisdom too. We really need wisdom to know what to do, when to not do anything, and yeah, to be still when we need to. It's, that's the first time I've lifted more than five pounds <laughs> since my surgery. So, yeah. Oh, it's good. Can you stretch out your hand? And I want to I want to emphasize we're going to stay in contact, but also we just want to we believe that we're sending them out light into a dark world. But yet at the same time, light shines. Oh, does it shine? Father, we are just so thankful for the heart that these two have and the family and the, their commitment, Lord, to to change and to influence those individuals there and all of the conflict that exists and the, the true decision to step in to prophetically and apostolically change the whole environment of those young people in Haiti. And we ask, Lord, that wherever they go, that you would prepare the way, that you would protect them and watch over them and let no harm come unto them. Lord, even this, this week, there were some families that were abducted. Lord, we ask that you would guard them, let your angels protect them, let your angels, Lord, watch over them. And Lord, we thank you that each one of them is under your care in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Make sure you talk to them at the end of the service and uh, take care of that with us. And, um, and we have one, one more, the, the Williams family. If, if uh, the whole, we got a whole gang here. This is Gen X. And um, come on, give them a big, give them a big praise. So Gen X is stepping out. They're, they're going forth. Uh, at the end of the year, they're going to have services on Saturdays until the end of the year. And then they're going to be starting their, uh, their own ministry. Well, they already have, but we are, we're just apostolically sending them forth. We believe that they are called. God has chosen them. And we believe great things are going to happen for, for, for the Williams family and for their lives and the calling that they have on all of them. And I think even last Saturday, there was a prophetic word over them about the kids and generational. So we are super excited about what God's doing. And if you just make sure that you know that you can connect with Gen X through Facebook, through uh, everything, if you want to support them, if you feel like you're to be a part of this ministry, I encourage you to connect with them, to, 
to stand with them uh, and to, uh, to, to, to walk with them because this is an important aspect. We're, we're the body of Christ. We're not just an individual church, but sometimes we're called to be a part of, of, a, of different ministries. And if you feel like that you're supposed to be part of this ministry, make the commitment to stand with them, make the commitment to support them, and uh, you, you should be able to find out. And if any of you want to go on Saturday nights uh, to their new location, you're more than welcome to participate. David, you want to say anything? Yeah, we're so excited, and uh, we just want to thank the Tree of Life for uh, giving us the opportunity to start the ministry three years ago. Um, and what God has done in, in that amount of time of restoring our family and me and Lala getting remarried again and now me being over, uh, sober over three years in our family. Um, amen. Yes. And it wouldn't be for without Pastor Andrew and Jay Bowerman who offered uh, for me to start a group for the young adults, right? And, and what it transpired into uh, very quickly where it, it is now a full-on service. And, and so just our heart as we move forward of what God has put on me and Lala's heart is we really have a, 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 an and uh, we want to evangelize. So we're going to be doing events, uh, tent revivals, uh, thanks to Pastor Andrew's brother. Now we have a wonderful home with a lot of land that we can put up a tent, have a hundred and some people at, and, and, and we're going to be going and finding people who are not going going to church. So, so Lala has actually been this last week going out into public's parking lots and walking around asking if she can pray for people. Amen. Amen. The courage and what God has been doing in her life is absolutely wonderful. And we, we sat down, we talked with the kids of we will be doing that as a family. So we will be going out and we will be going into Walmarts and we'll be going into Publixes and we'll be walking around and we will be asking people who are coming in or out of the store if they need prayer because the Lord is raising up families in 2024. That is what the God, that is a move of God that is going to happen because the devil has attacked the America, the, the family that God created, right? God created family and what has been under so much attack is the family. So husbands and wives and children who represent and stand up for the body of Christ and who will go out and tell people about Jesus. Those are the people that God is going to raise up and use in a powerful way. And we just want to step into what the Holy Spirit is doing. So if you want to follow what we're doing, if you want to support what we're doing, because we are out there. If you don't know me, if you never came on a Saturday night service, I'm on fire for Jesus Christ. And I will go wherever I'm at and I will tell people about Jesus Christ because Jesus Christ saved my life from being a homeless heroin addict sleeping in the woods. And now I stand here as an ordained pastor, thank you to Tree Life and Pastor Andrew, someone who is now studying for his master's degree with a family, with a beautiful home on an acre and a half of land because Jesus Christ is faithful and will bless you when you follow him and nothing can stop what God is doing in your life. So I want to tell you, if you want to yoke up with the Holy Spirit, you know where we're at. We got cards out there and we would love to talk to you and let you know if you want to be a part of the revival because Gen Next is the revival. God bless you. So let's stretch out our hands uh, over them. I'm, we're serious. If you feel led to be a part of this ministry, please support them and stand with them. Father, we are so excited that you're advancing, that we're pushing, that we're apostolically going forth into the things that you have. And we just ask right now that you would watch over this family, watch over the ministry. Lord, let your divine purpose be accomplished through them. Lord, bless them abundantly and continue to guide and direct their very step. Lord, what you have begun, you are very faithful, Lord. What you've begun, you will finish. You're the author and the finisher of their faith. And Lord, we stand with them today, blessing them and agreeing, Lord, that your kingdom is going to come and your will is going to be done. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. It almost looks like there's something going on around here. I just want to also make sure that you know, I mean, it's, it's cr it, this, is, this was kind of unexpected, but we, we've had... Um, an opportunity to work with the Spanish church for some time. We've known them for a long time. And uh, so on Sunday afternoons, it was supposed to start in January, 
but circumstances. So they are um, having services at 1.30 here at the tree. Starting, uh, They started last Sunday, and they will continue. But I just want you to know there's opportunities. So, And it is also translated. So if you, if you want to be involved, and if you know any Spanish people that need uh, uh, a church uh, to be a part of, Tree of Life uh, has opened the doors for JR and his whole congregation to be a part of Tree of Life, and so you're aware of that. So, you know, we have Tuesday night, uh, Living by the Spirit. Wednesday night, Growing in the Word. Thursday night, we have Men and Women's Group. Friday night, you have Harvest. Saturday night, you got Gen X, and you're going to hear more about that, and if you want to attend any of those services. Sunday morning, we have in-depth Bible study with Matt Vila. Uh, it was fantastic this morning. I know that everyone who goes there, I was shaking their hands as they were coming out and said, man, this is good stuff. So Matt, thank you for doing that. And then, of course, we have, um, we're going to, we have this, a new ministry, the Spanish service in the afternoon. And we just want to make sure that you're, you have an opportunity to choose. God's doing things. Okay? He is doing great things in our midst. So... Would you stand with me as we prepare our hearts for the word? Deb just got back from, uh, from the Bahamas. We're going to talk a little bit more about that next week. So um, we also, the shoe boxes, we'll talk about that next week as well. But um, our theme for this Christmas is Isaiah. And uh, we want to just focus on that particular scripture while I sneak down here and get my uh, clicker so I don't mess up anything. Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. I, I've thought about this in so many different ways, and, and yet God, I've, I've probably read this scripture a thousand, more than that probably. <laughs> I mean, every Christmas we talk about it, but it's in the Bible, unto us. This is not something distant, but unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. There's a distinct difference between a child and a son in the sense of lineage and of, of, of purpose and so forth that needs to be understood, but we'll dig into this. But Father, I thank you for drawing us today. And we're not here by chance. Lord, you have brought us together to hear the word of God, to understand in a clearer way your love for us, your grace for us, your amazing love for us, and your amazing grace for us. If it had not been, as the song declared today, if it had not been for the Lord, what would this world be like? What, what our individuals' lives would be like? What would America be like? What would, what would this world be and we see it in certain countries and in certain environments where God is not honored, how destructive that nature is and that community becomes. And we ask, Lord, that you would help us to allow you and welcome you in because unto us a gift has been given. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You may be seated. You may be seated. So this is, this is the scripture in context and every time that i've read it i i just get more and more out of it it's for unto us a child is born unto us a son is given the government will be upon his shoulder or or the the orchestration of it all i mean when you think about god creating the earth and everything he is the governing factor i don't know if you ever heard that word is a really great word the governing factor he is what makes it all function He's the one that is in charge of it all. And it says upon his shoulders, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, of this increase of his government. It will never end. And the peace, there will be no end, and the throne of David over his kingdom to order it and establish it with judgment and justice. And I want you to, to kind of sense this with me a little bit, but there's a lot of judgments that are not true and right. But God here is saying justice and judgment is going to come together. The only one that can truly do that is God, is Christ, because he does it with a pure heart. I don't know of any politician, I don't know of any individual 
who can really do it with a true, pure heart, but God can, and he brings forth justice from that time forth, even forever. You know, the interesting thing about this whole thing, it didn't start just last week or last month or 200 years ago or 500 years ago. It began before the foundations of the earth. And actually, this prophetic word that we're reading happened 2,700, 2,800 years ago. That's how long this prophetic word, and it was 800 years before Christ was born. It was prophesied that he would come. But the, my favorite part of this whole scripture is this. The seal of the Lord of hosts will perform it. What does that, what does that mean? It means God's got this, and God's going to finish it, and God is in charge of all of this, and I don't need to try to make it happen. I just need to believe it and trust that he is doing something supernatural in our midst, and always has and always will. I mean, I know that in the natural, we don't think about this sometimes, but you didn't think once about the sun coming up this morning. Well, it didn't really come up. We were just spinning, right? It just happens. All these things that, you know, you didn't think about breathing this morning. It just, it was, God created you. The seal of the Lord performs that. You couldn't breathe without him, you know? All of these different things, the way our bodies were created, how intricate and how so purposely our body functions that I can walk upright. And now that I'm a little better than I was, I can, I can even do a little bit of move. You know, our bodies are amazing. And then he puts us in this beautiful planet that is perfectly made for us. He's the one that accomplished those things. So what I want to do here is just go into this, this story a little bit more about unto us, okay? And I know that if you read this with me, you'll understand. Now, the birth of Jesus was as follows. And I mean, it's simply just saying there's a certain order and certain things had taken place. And so I want us to follow this a little bit. After his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph before they came together, that means they were engaged, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. Now explain that one. You know, that's, that's one of the things that we're going to see here. Then Joseph, her husband, his fiancé, as they would say in France, right? Fiancé. Being a just man, not wanting to make her a public example. What does that mean? He realized she was pregnant and it wasn't by him. And because he was a just man or he was a a man that didn't want to make a big deal about this and didn't want to shame her publicly, it says here, was minded to put her away secretly or privately. But while he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. So this man had a dream. He was thinking about doing something, and then all of a sudden he has a dream, and this dream begins to unfold the rest of the story. Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take to you Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. And then she will bring forth a son. It's not just a child, but it's a son. And you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save the people from their sins. So all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophets saying, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated God with us. Just in those few verses, which is also in Isaiah, it's actually in chapter 7, we have this again, unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and it also communicates what the word unto us means, Emmanuel, God with us with us. God wants to fit into our lives, wants to impact our lives, wants us to know that he's not here just for Joseph and Mary. He's here for the whole world. He wants to save us from our sins. He wants to rescue us. He knows that we are the ones that need help, and he became the first alien to come to the earth. Well, he didn't. Was he, was he an alien? No. He came in human form, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld the only begotten, full of grace and truth. So here we have another 
realization of the scripture. So as we go on and read a little bit more, then they shall bring out a young woman. And this is, I, don't, I didn't even want to read this, but I was thinking about it from the perspective of this is what Joseph was told to do. Have you ever been told to do something because it's the just thing or the right thing, but it's really not the just thing and it's not the right thing? But he, he heard a word from the Lord, so if you want to know a little bit more about that, you can read it right there. Because but what she did was not disgraceful. What she did is obey God. So one of the things that I want to do is continue in Acts. And I, I've thought about this. How do I bring this into a greater understanding of what's happening in our society, what's happening in the world? And I don't know if you've ever heard this story in Acts chapter 5. But when they heard this, they were furious and plotted to kill them. This is talking about the disciples. Then one in the council stood up, a Pharisee named Gamaliel. This is probably one of the wisest men <laughs> that we find on the Pharisaical side. And he uh, stood up and made a declaration because they were spreading the gospel and Jesus Christ. And they were talking and they were punishing the disciples and it says, I, I think you need to handle this a little different. And what you read here, a little bit through this section, is commanding that they should not talk about Christ and not talk about this thing. And it, but yet they were talking about several other things that spurred up but never accomplished anything. So I want to read here. It says, it goes on in like verse 38. And now I say to you, keep away from these men and let them alone. For if this is plan." Or if this work is of man, it will come to nothing. This was over 2,000 years ago. Gamaliel said, if this is just a person and his death and his resurrection means nothing, it will come to nothing. But 2,000 years later, the seal of the Lord is still performing. And the gospel of Christ is still spreading. Look what it says. It says, if... It will come to nothing, but if it is of God, you cannot overthrow it, lest you even be found to fight against God. Now I'm going to say something. Unto us, a child has been born. Unto us, a son has been given. And every year we're reminded at Christmas that this has actually happened. Yes. This actually has happened. And then God gives us another opportunity to examine whether or not we have embraced him, or we're like saying, well, I don't know if I want to make a big deal about it. Joseph wasn't even sure what he should do with it, but he had a dream. There's something inside of us that either agrees or disagrees with this revelation that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And even Joseph himself was not sure what he should do with, with uh, Mary. He wasn't sure what he should do with Christ. And I, I think it's awesome when you think about it. We talk about Mary so often about how awesome she was in the sense of believing, but how awesome was Joseph to step into and become the father of Jesus Christ, to adopt him and to raise him up as a young child and to stand with him. And we're going to read more about that because you'll see some more things about this. But I love this last part, lest you even be found to fight against God. You cannot fight against the seal of God. And I want to say this, uh, many of us have been drawn for generations, for years we've been drawn to come to the, to the Lord. And many of us have resisted it. And yet there comes a time where we finally say, I surrender. <laughs> I give myself up and I want to become a follower of Christ. And they agreed with them. I want you to notice this order. And when they had called for the apostles, and again, there's that word apostle, which just means sent ones, beat them. See, now, even though Gamaliel said, leave them alone, guess what they did? Let's just squeeze them a little bit. Let's give them a hard time so they won't name the name of Jesus. We live in a society today that does the same thing. I'm going to tell you, and I'm going to address this in just a second. I'm going to finish reading this. They commanded them that they should not speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. So they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer the shame for his name. And daily in the temple, in every house, they did not cease teaching and preaching Jesus Christ. So now let's take our culture today, if we're not careful, like Jerusalem, Israel. 
Israel itself is mentioned over 800 times in Scripture. More than, Gaza is not mentioned. The thing, the idea is sometimes that we we better be on the right side of history. Because there's people squeezing us and wanting us not to stand for the right of Israel to exist in this world. And that is a biblical place. That's where Jesus came from. That's God's, that's God's special place. He has called it out, and I'm calling it out to you today. I don't know if you noticed this, but ever since this church has begun, there's always been a Jewish flag, and there's always been an American flag, because we understand where we came from and what we believe. And even this right here is, is just a belief of hope and trust in the prophetic. God is in charge of these things. And the seal of the Lord will perform it. And I know that there is an opposition. There's an opposition in the UN. There's an opposition in our government. There's an opposition around the world. But I'm going to tell you right now, I'm sorry, I'm not going to... I might get persecuted for this, but I'm standing with Israel. They might give me a hard time, but we're standing with Israel. And, and uh, maybe, maybe we can... Can you, uh, Debbie, can you take me uh, to the very last scripture that I have in Joel? And jo Joel, is a, in, in, uh, Joel is a prophetic scripture. There's so many of them. Well, the Spirit of the Lord, uh, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. That's in Joel chapter 2, upon the young and the old, right? But in chapter 3... In chapter 3, in verse 1 and 2, it says, Behold, in those days and in that time, when I bring back the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem, I will also gather all nations and bring them down to the valley of Jehoshaphat, and I will enter into judgment with their account of my people, my heritage Israel. When they have scattered among the nations, they have also divided up my land. You know, you know I don't know if you know this or not, but... Uh, God never intended for Israel to be divided up. It was done politically. It was never done biblically. But Israel has been in that part of the world, and actually they were all called Palestinians because that whole region is Palestinian. Even the Jews were called Palestinians. It was just a weird way of, of declaring this, and now they're trying to divide. But you cannot divide or establish something that God has already declared. He is going to take care of this place and there's this valley of Jehoshaphat or this valley of decisions that has to be made that we stand on the right side of history. On the right side of history. Can we go back to the other scripture where we were? So let me continue uh, with this a little bit more. And I want to, to make sure that we are there in this regard. All right. This is one of my favorite parts here because now... It begins to go a little further. This is the following of Christ or how it all unfolded. I was talking to someone over the last couple of weeks. I thought the wise men showed up right away. Wise men from the east. Where is he who was born king of the Jews? For we've seen his star in the east and have come to worship. And when Herod the king heard this, he was troubled in all Jerusalem with him. It's interesting that Israel itself was troubled and Herod was troubled, but it has been prophesied all along. And this is what's interesting. It says, when he had gathered all the chief priests and the scribes and the people together, he inquired of them, where is the Messiah, the Christ? Where is, where is he to be born? And of course, it's in the scripture. So they said to him, in Bethlehem, and this is in the Old Testament of Judah, to this it is written by the prophets, but you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not to be the least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. We declare him our shepherd. I call him my shepherd. Anybody else declare him as their shepherd? You know, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He had truly has blessed us. And so here you have another prophet. I don't know if this makes sense, but we literally are prophetic people. We, every aspect of who I am, every aspect of who you are is you're prophetic. You're actually believing what the Bible says. You receive it into your heart, and then you allow it to manifest. You believe that God has an eternal plan for you. 
You believe with all of your heart that he has forgiven you of your sins and you declare that. And I tell you what, prophetically, before it happened in my life, is I was questioning it. I was going, I don't know if this is really true or not. When I was a young man, I said, I don't know if I want to give up my life. In the instant that I truly surrendered, all of a sudden I said, why did I wait so long? Why did I, I feel so different as my whole life just completely transformed? And I saw things different. I, ex- I loved different. I saw things differently. But before, I doubted and I questioned. And I think there's a lot of us that sometimes don't give it all. And we wonder why we're not experiencing the fullness of what God has for us. And even prophetically, here it is. And this is, again, what it says. So I want to read on a little bit more. When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly because now they were told to go to Bethlehem. And when they had come into the house, I thought Jesus was born in the stable. Well, this was a little later. See, we we crunch everything together. So a little later, the wise men showed up. They saw the young child with Mary and his mother and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented gifts to them with gold, frankincense, and myrrh. This is why we always come up with three. It's because there were three gifts. But we don't know how many wise men there were. It's just they distinctly brought three gifts because they represented something. We're not going to get into that today. Then being divinely warned, again, how important is this in our lives? Divinely warned. We are divinely warned today about certain things. We're divinely warned in the past about certain things. God is trying to watch out for us. He gives us scripture. He gives us direction. Divinely warned in a dream that they should not return to Herod. They departed to their country another way. And this is, again, one of those things that we say to ourselves. This happened such a long time ago. But I'm telling you, it fits into our world today. Now, when they had departed, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise, take the young child and his mother, flee to Egypt, stay there until I bring you word, for Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. And when he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night and departed from Egypt. There's always an antichrist spirit that wants to take us out, take out the scriptural principles that we know are true they're yes and amen and even here he was warned when he arose he took the young child and his mother by night and departed to egypt and was there until the death of herod that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by how many times are we going to hear this as it was spoken by the prophets there are more prophetic words that are in the bible right now that you can literally say this is happening today This is being fulfilled today. The things that are happening in our world are actually written in the Bible, declared to us. Spoken by the Lord through the prophet, saying, Out of Egypt I called my son. So prophetically, he had to go. And guess what? All of these things fit together and accomplished so Jesus would come out of Egypt. Now this next part, you, you also can say the same thing. Then Herod, when he saw that he was... Deceived by the wise men, was he deceived or, or did he just have the wrong motive? Was exceedingly angry and he sent forth and put to death all the male children who were in Bethlehem in all the district from two years old and under, according to the time which he had determined from the wise men. Do we, do we have any death of children today? And yet we, we really think, oh, Herod, he's He's terrible. But it's, our government agrees with it. Our society agrees with it. There's an there's a application out there you can sign. There's some statues that are going forth in, 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 uh, in Florida. Then was fulfilled, which was spoken by Jeremiah the prophet, saying, is it, is it saying it again? A voice was heard in Rama, lamentation, weeping, and great mourning. Rachel weeping for her children, refusing to be comforted because they are no more. I want to tell you something about every child that was killed back then is, went directly to heaven. Every child that is, 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 uh, is aborted today goes directly to heaven. The seal of the Lord 
performs it, refusing to be comforted because they are no more. Now, when Herod was dead, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt. Do you, do you ever realize actually how important dreams are? And yet our society today kind of like just shrugs it off as having too much pizza. When's the last time you had a dream? When's the last time that God's kind of woken you up and you had like this clear awareness that you had a dream? Dreams are part of the Bible. They're part of our life. And actually God's trying to bypass this thing right here and subconsciously speak directly to us. So I would listen to your dreams. I've done dream interpretation for years and I can tell you there are so many people who are unaware that God is speaking to them. If you have a reoccurring dream, God is trying to say something to you. If you're having dreams and you go, what, what was that all about? Write them down. Pray over them. You can talk to us. You can talk to others. There are, God wants to talk to you and love on you and help you and guide and direct you. Notice how many times this happened, not just with uh, Joseph, but with others in the Bible. And it says, Arise, take your young child and his mother, and go to the land of Israel. For those who sought the young child live no longer. So he, Herod died. But also, this next part is that very interesting. Then he arose, took the young child and his mother, and came into the land of Israel. But when he heard that, that there was a certain leader in this area, they said, well, we don't want to go there. He was afraid to go there. And being warned by God in a dream, he turned aside and went into the region of Galilee which is also very clear in the scriptures. And he came and dwelt in the city of Nazareth, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophets. Do you see how often this happens? And I'm going to tell you something. Your whole life, God has spoken by the prophets that you are blessed, highly favored, that you have been called out by God into his marvelous love and grace. That it's prophesied. Jesus Christ came into this world to love on you and me and everyone but so many refuse to believe it. And it says here that it might be fulfilled, he shall be called a Nazarite. Jesus the Nazarite. This is also very clear in Scripture. Are you getting it yet by the prophets? <laughs> so I'm going to just, uh, just share with you, this is what God wants to communicate to us, that he is speaking to us in such a clear way that he wants to bring forth this concept of this is not just a repeat of Christmas again and again. No, every time that we have Christmas, every time this season comes along, we realize these words have been spoken by the prophets and God so lovingly reminds us over and over again. He wants us to have ears to hear. He wants us to have eyes to see. He wants us to understand, and he wants to heal us. And if there's anyone in this room today that you're not sure about your relationship with God, God lovingly is just wanting to remind you again that he wants you to hear that you're loved. He wants you to see the truth. He wants you to be aware of what's happening in the world is not by chance. And even though there is conflict and opposition, God is working out his plan and the seal of the Lord will perform it. He's a wonderful counselor, a mighty God, an everlasting father, a prince of peace. He cares deeply for every one of us, and he, not in a hard way, but in a loving way, is reminding us year after year, I'm giving you one more chance to get this thing right, to settle this thing, in your heart, will you accept unto us Emmanuel has come to change this world? And yet you see rumors of war, conflict. All of these things you see, is this what God wants? He's called the Prince of Peace. Matter of fact, he says, I will turn your swords into pruning hooks. I want to turn these things into uh, 
harvest, not conflict. I want to bring peace to the whole earth. And literally, you'll find this. Where Christ is honored, there truly is more peace than any other part of the world. And yet, we have people who prefer war over peace. We have people who want to create conflict. Lord, bring us into a greater understanding that you are the true prince of peace. Would you bow your heads? I know this scripture is, is so overused and we've heard it so many times, but I want to just quote it to you. I want to just declare this to you from John. And it says, so lovingly, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. He who believes in him shall not be condemned, but who does not believe is condemned already. What is it saying? It says, you have a choice. He came into this world to love on us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whosoever believeth in him, Lord, whatever you need to do in our lives, to bring any corrections, to get, get it out of our hearts and out of our lives that we are in charge. The government is upon your shoulders. Get it out of our hearts and out of our minds that we have to fix things and repair things all the time, that it's up to us. No, it's up to you. And we give our life to you so we can become and fulfill the purpose that you have. You divinely desire to bless everyone in this place. Bring forth your blessing, and Lord, help us to believe. Is there anyone in this room today that wants to accept Christ? Today is the day of salvation. Is there anyone who wants to say, I, I want to surrender all? Is there anybody? Just raise your hand. I see that hand. I see those hands. Anybody else? I see those hands. Let's all stand together. If the ministering elders would come forward, stand. If those of you that raised your hand before the end of the service, if you would make yourself up to come up front and to come in agreement with those that are here that are going to pray with you and, and, uh, and seal that which you've committed in your heart, We live in a society that wants to push Jesus down, but we are a, a group of people that want to lift Jesus up. Amen? And we believe that God's called all of us to make a difference in this community. And as I said early, I, I just today, for whatever reason, very strongly, I want to just declare to, over us this apostolic calling that wherever we go, if it's Egypt, if it's Bethlehem, if it's Naples, if it's Africa, if it's Haiti, if it's this or that, if it's Taiwan, we got Elias that does a lot of ministry in China. We have all these opportunities. Wherever God takes us, let's allow him to use us in those moments. Let's not shrink back. Tony, James, you guys are going into the prisons. We want to bless them. Release them. Let them go forth. We believe with all of our hearts that God has every intention of fulfilling the prophecy. And the greatest prophecy is that what John the Baptist said, Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. It doesn't cover them. He removes them. Thank you. Let us pray. Put your hand over your heart. Lord, I believe with my heart. Say it with me. I believe with my heart. I confess with my mouth that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And upon that confession, you establish 
my belief, my trust in you. You conquered sin. You conquered death. I believe that. And I put my trust in you. Now and throughout all eternity. I believe that you have great things in store. And however you want to use me as a servant, I say yes. Send me from this place. All authority has been given. This is what Jesus says. Therefore, go into all the world and preach the gospel. Declare. Go forth and let the light of Christ shine. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. And may this be the best Christmas you've ever had.